there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to create some kind of pop background cards. These are fun to make, easy to make, and you can kind of make them as easy or as tricky as you like to. I, as usual, like to make relatively easy, take the easy option, but I did want to show you there are so many ways to go about creating this card. As always, I like to give you as many options as we can, and that way, hopefully, you have something in your stash that is going to work. Now, I'm going to kind of go relatively speedy through these options, but I did uh, just want to show you kind of that there are lots of ways. So first up, I'm using a jelly plate, and I have got some pink, some orange, and some red acrylic paint. Popped a little dot of each one down on my gel plate, and then spread it out with my brayer. Popped a piece of paper on top so that I can get a really nice print and this is what we are left with. Now for this technique it is easiest to have two of exactly the same kind of backgrounds. Now obviously you think here how can you create two of the same when this is something kind of so organic? Well they don't have to be identical, identical. I mean they need to look the same but you'll see here that give or take this background part can be anything. So I'm going to create relatively similar amounts of space. I mean there was no real genius part of it here. It was kind of a third, a third, a third. I've got a nice blend between the colors and that's really all I'm worried about at this point. I'm going to take my next pull from this one and then give or take, I think these are going to look pretty much similar. So they don't need to be the same same but you just need to have kind of the same background colors. Now this is where the gel plate gets really addictive. <laughs> so I had some extra paint on my brayer and I thought I'll pop that down on the plate and take a print and I'll, you never know what I can use that for. And and then I'm like, oh, well, I'm here. I'll just add a little bit more paint and then make it a proper print. And then I kind of go through it. I've changed the direction of it. And I don't end up using this in today's video. That wasn't kind of the purpose of it. In fact, I was truly, truly, my intention was to just use up the leftover paint on my brayer. But this is how gel printing goes. Uh, so I take a pull of that one. And then again, I mean, this is a gorgeous little thing. There are so many uh, little backgrounds and things that we could do with this one. But anyway, moving on. If you wanted to, there is another way you could just do some ink blending. I am using some mustard seed, worn lipstick, and spiced marmalade to pop down these. I'm using some Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to use some domed foam blenders. And I also have a piece of mint tape. That's that blue low-tech tape sitting there. Because I will eventually pop this tacky side up on my fingers. So that I don't get my little paw prints all through this uh, gorgeous piece of ink blending that we are doing. The first one here I decided to come in relatively heavy. And I'm going to go yellow, orange, pink. That's the easiest way it's going to blend if I blended together the yellow and the pink I probably would make orange anyway but I prefer to have kind of that solid orange color if it's there this one here I decided to go much much lighter now if you want to kind of cheat the blending process there are a few things you could do I would suggest starting off by using uh, like the a watercolor paper the Tim Holtz watercolor paper which has one smooth side and one textured side that is my cheat for getting a perfect blend I always use the smooth side and that stuff is going to help you blend so well because of the coating that it has on it and then as for the tool, it's kind of a preference thing. I find I blend best with these domed foam blenders by far. I have tried the makeup brushes, all those sorts of brushes. I can't get a nice, I always end up with blotchy, splotchy, all sorts. So uh, they are not for me, but the domed foam blenders help me get my smooth blend too. Now these don't have to be perfect. These are just the backgrounds. So I have the heavy oxide layering, a light oxide layering, and then my paint backgrounds too. Now from here, we want to stamp something in the background. Now for this background stamp here, I have created my own pattern using a whole lot of happy birthday themed stamps. So I have just uh, laid these all out and then picked them up with my the lid of my stamping platform. And for this one, I use the Concord and Ninth All the Birthday stamp set. Most of the happy birthdays came from this one. Then from this one, uh, this is the one liners from Woodwear and I used a th two or three I think from that one. I was going to use the happy birthday but I ended up just using the best ever from that memory box one and then the curly greeting ones I used both the happy birthday and the just for you. And all I did was kind of play around and find out where they could go, piece them back together, pick it up with my lid and we are good to go and create our background. I'm going to be using some Versifying Clear inks. These are pigment inks and they are beautiful crisp stamping inks. I started off with kind of a really light yellow color. I wasn't sure 
what I wanted here. I wasn't sure how dark I wanted to go with the background. I ended up adding a little bit of orange in, thinking that maybe that would help, and then I quite like that, so I do the orange over the whole background instead of just part of it. Now, as I said, this is personal preference. You can go as dark here with the colors, as light here with the colors, anything you want. All you need to do is then pick that up, put your second piece in, and you want to stamp exactly the same thing in the same place again. Now I have these sticky grid sheets on my stamping platform here, and this is kind of the easiest way that I can go about this. I just pop it in exactly the same place both times. I don't have any magnets to get in the way, and that sticky grid just holds onto it there nicely, and we are good to go. So I have exactly the same print in exactly the same place on both of my panels. And again, you need to do this with the other ones. This is the painted uh, gel print backgrounds that I did. Now the backgrounds are obviously, the stamps kind of are a bit small for the backgrounds, but I was going to cut these down for the cards anyway, so uh, that didn't bother me at all. I used a little bit of red to help it show up on the red part of those. Or if you don't want to piece together your own background, you could use a, a background stamp. This one is the Stippled Circles from Simon Hurley. And this is just a really fun one. This has lots of pull apart pieces to it. There's also singular pieces that you can pull out of it. Or you can just use it as a whole background stamp like I am here. This does keep things really, really simple because obviously it's just one thing. You don't have to kind of search through your stamps and pop them all together. You could just repeat uh, the same stamp over and over again. If you had like a big happy birthday, you could just repeat that all over that would work too um, but whatever you do to one panel you need to do to the other panel as well then I have this butterfly this one from Stampendous has been discontinued which makes me so sad but it is still a gorgeous big butterfly stamp you can choose any stamp here as long as it's got some open spaces now probably this one has not quite as much open space as I would like it to but it still works and that's what I'm kind of showing you it doesn't matter what you have in your stash Usually you can make it work with a little bit of a give and take. Now I'm just using some pigment ink to stamp these ones as well. Pigment ink, the Versifying Clears specifically, are my favorite for stamping. These give the most crisp stamping image out of any inks I have tried. So these are my absolute preference when it comes to stamping. And then I decided to blend in a little bit of the red there as well. It didn't really make too much difference, um, but it did make the body shot just a little bit more. But again, whatever you do to the first one, you need to do to the second panel as well. Then I'm going to fussy cut out the image. Now, one of the pros of being able to uh, stamp the image on the second panel is that things like the antennae from the butterfly I don't have to worry about cutting out because they're already stamped underneath so I'm not going to spend my time doing that at all and the idea here is that we can kind of have a popped up image as well as having the pattern in the background continue so for the next one, I'm going to use a Julie Hickey design. So this is called Florals for You stamp set. I like this one because it's much more open. There's much more open space in the stamps. And both of these flowers are gorgeous, yet easy to fussy cut um, because they may have dyes, but I don't usually buy the dyes, so um, I didn't, obviously. But easy to fussy cut and gorgeous little sentiments that come with this one. So I think this might be uh, coming up in my videos a bit more. I'm going to stamp this out on both panels in the Versifying Onyx Black. I went with a really black color this time, but apparently I can't figure out which way up my panels were meant to go. So now I need to re-stamp this. Luckily, because of where I positioned this on my background, I'm able to stamp this again and get away with it just fine. But that was very close to being a bit of a muck up, but we would have made it work nonetheless. So then I'm going to fussy cut out this one. If you were uncomfortable fussy cutting out the stem, I would just do the flower head and the big gorgeous leaves and it would look really good nonetheless. Now, of course, you could kind of get away with not doing two panels here and you could probably just either die cut it out or carefully fussy cut somehow and pop this up. I just really like the look that if they look from the side, the image kind of continues underneath. There's no kind of break in the cardstock. Uh, this is my preferred way to do it. But as I said, there are so many ways to do things with so many different techniques, so many different uh, supplies, and we can kind of end up with a similar journey along the way. Uh, but just whatever works for you. This is just the way I like to do it. I like that continuation there. And look at that dimension. I really, really like that. I didn't put foam tape underneath that little bit of the stem, so I decided to put a tiny little bit of um, matte glue just at the very, very tail of that stem so I could keep that in place and that it wouldn't get bent or anything if it were going through the mail. Then, to keep this super, super simple, I have the Paper Rose All Occasions. This is just... <laughs> 
<laughs> my go-to at the moment. I'm loving not having to stamp out sentiments and things. So, so handy. Um, and this is wishing you a wonderful day. Super simple. I'm going to cut this one up so that there are two little um, parts to my sentiment. And just I'm just going to leave it as is. It kind of brings in the white from the uh, border, the background that we created, because this is a very bright card. Now, on to making the butterfly. I have trimmed all of these down to be three and three quarters by five inches that way they've got a nice border around uh, on the card base if this bothers you having when once you have fussy cut out your images and there is that white kind of core of the cardstock if it bothers you then take a pen a marker pen and go around the edges and that will get rid of that i prefer to do that but sometimes i forget as well so there you can see all that beautiful continuation and also if your fussy cutting isn't perfect having the image stamped underneath and the continuing effect underneath is going to really work wonders for us too this one says wishing you a wonderful day and this is more of kind of a happy birthday because obviously in the background it says happy birthday. Uh, so I thought this was fairly obvious. I'm popping a tiny little bit of foam tape on each end and this is going to go straight across the middle of the butterfly. I need to add a little bit of liquid glue and this will stick down to the butterfly um, and keep the sentiment in place as it goes through the mail as well. For this one, I did decide to, decide to um, add on a couple of enamel dots down the body of the butterfly just to give it a little bit more definition and a little bit more interest. And then that is this card finished for today too. So I hope you have enjoyed these pop backgrounds. These are very fun to make. If you end up creating some of these and you would like to share them with us, the best place you can do that is over on our Facebook page. It is called Come Crafting with Natasha. I will also leave a link to it down in the description box below below this video. I will also have links to all the products used in this video along with links to ways that you can help support me on YouTube as well. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye!